The challenge. Kiss your crush's forehead. Tsuki Ayama. Yamaguchi bit his lip, squinting at the math problem on the worksheet. Hey, Tsuki, can you help me with this one? A chair was pushed back behind him, and Yamaguchi could hear Tsukishima's footsteps as he walked over to Yamaguchi's desk. Everybody else had already left for lunch, which left the two of them alone in the classroom. Which one? Tsukishima rested one hand on the back of Yamaguchi's chair and the other on his desk, leaning over him to look at the paper. The back of Yamaguchi's neck flushed pink. Oh, um, this one. He pointed at the problem and Tsukishima nodded, leaning in closer to read it. Yamaguchi swallowed hard. I'm not really sure what to do. The blonde boy was quiet for a moment before speaking. You should use the law of cosines. That'll make it easier. Turning his head to meet Yamaguchi's gaze, Tsukishima's golden eyes peered at him from behind his glasses. Yamaguchi bit his lip. It's now or never, I guess. Then, before he could think too hard about it, Yamaguchi quickly pushed himself off of his seat a little to peck Tsukishima's forehead. Thanks, uh, Tsuki. Yamaguchi blushed and hastily looked back down at the paper. He could feel Tsukishima's gaze boring into the side of his face. So, um, the blonde still hadn't moved. Yamaguchi's face turned even redder. Right. Well, uh, the angle that I'd have to use would be this one, yeah? Tsukishima didn't respond. After a long moment, Yamaguchi glanced up at him nervously. Tsuki? But Tsukishima was just staring at him. Yamaguchi flushed and quickly moved his gaze back to the paper. Yeah, uh, okay. And then I'd have to, uh, um, just square the length of this side before I... You did it wrong. Huh? Really? Yamaguchi squinted harder at the paper. Which part? Because I thought. And then there were two fingers on either side of his jaw and his face was being tilted upwards and then there were Tsukishima's lips, pressing against his own. Yamaguchi's eyes widened as Tsukishima pulled back to look at him. That part. The shorter boy flushed pink. Oh. He hoped he wasn't squeaking. That um. Oh. Well. Thank you for, uh, correcting me then. Tsukishima smirked. You're welcome. Yamaguchi's eyes couldn't help but dart down to the blonde boy's lips for a moment before he blushed and looked back up. Tsukishima just raised an eyebrow. Did you get it the first time or should I show you again? Yamaguchi's face was scarlet. I, uh, well, you know, maybe. Scratch that, he was breaking out of the infrared spectrum completely. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be yeah, okay. Tsukishima smiled as he leaned in once more. Shut up, Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi laughed a little, meeting him halfway. Sorry, Tsuki. Sakuatsu Atsumu's grin was wide as he sauntered up to the net, his arms outstretched and his bangs clinging to his forehead with sweat. The rest of his team had already started to head to the locker room. That was a good game. Yeah, yeah. If it wasn't just a practice match, we would have totally kicked your asses. MHM. Whatever you need to tell yourself, Omi-kun. Sakusa rolled his eyes, slipping his mask back on as they neared the net. This better not go to your head. I'm worried enough for how your neck is supposed to hold that thing up as it is. Atsumu gasped in mock offense. Oh Omi, how you wound me. You'll get over it. Atsumu smiled, holding out his hand to shake underneath the net. Seriously though, nice job. You played well, Omi-kun. Thanks. You weren't so bad yourself. Atsumu raised an eyebrow. Well? Aren't you gonna shake my hand? It's the polite thing to do, you know. Sakusa wrinkled his forehead. Fine. You have to come closer to the net though. Atsumu took a step forward. Closer. Atsumu took another step forward. Closer. But Atsumu just sighed. Omi. Closer. Atsumu sighed again before coming up all the way so that his face was pressed up against the net. 
I'm as close as I can be, Omi. Good. Shut your eyes now, please. Well jeez, Omi, if I'd known you'd be this strict about a handshake. Eyes, Mia. Sighing again, Atsumu complied. You're happy now? Sakusa smiled a little at his expression. Then he lightly took Atsumu's outstretched hand. Yes, actually. Leaning forward, he unhooked his mask to press a light kiss through the net to Atsumu's forehead. Good game. Atsumu's eyes shot open, his expression bewildered. Sakusa let go of his hand and turned away, starting towards where Kamori was waiting for him. Holy cow Omi. Did you really just... Sakusa didn't turn around, slipping his mask back on. You better watch out next time, Mia. We're gonna wipe the floor with you. He didn't need to see Atsumu though to know that he was grinning as he called out to his back. Yeah right. I'd like to see you try, Omi-kun. Sakusa smiled a little, resting his hands in his jacket's pockets. Bring it on. Bakuaka. Bakuto trudged over to the bench, moaning as he plopped down onto it. Ayaka. But the rest of his words were swallowed up in a loud groan as he covered his face with the palms of his hands. His teammates shared a look. Whose turn is it today? Not me. I went yesterday. It's alright, I'll take care of it. You all can continue practice. The rest of the Fukurodani members nodded and turned back to the net. Akashi, meanwhile, just sighed and headed over to the bench. Bakuto-san. Bakuto peeked out from between his fingers, but when he saw that it was Akashi, he immediately covered his face back up with his hands. Akashi. Akashi sighed again as he watched Bakuto moan into his palms. Perhaps I should try it out now. Bakuto groaned once more, and Akashi sat down beside him on the bench, making his voice a little gentler. Bakuto-san. Please put down your hands. But Akashi. Bakuto-san. Please. But I failed you all. You should never ever ever toss to me ever again. He moaned. Never ever, Kashi. Never ever ever. Bakuto-san. Akashi reached out and gently pried Bakuto's hands away from his face. The ace looked up at him, pouting. Akashi. Don't move, okay? Bakuto stuck his bottom lip out more, but he stopped fidgeting. Thank you. Then, pulling Bakuto's hands towards him, Akashi gently pressed his lips against his forehead. Bakuto's eyes widened. Akashi? Akashi just stood up from the bench, letting go of Bakuto's hands. The ace stared up at him with round eyes. Are you ready to play now, Bakuto-san? Bakuto grinned, his eyes sparkling. Akashi. Is that a yes? Bakuto jumped up off of the bench, excitedly bouncing on the balls of his feet. Can I pick you up? Bakuto-san. We're at practice. What about after? You're only three centimeters taller than me. Can I hug you then, Kashi? Pretty pretty please? Bakuto-san. I promise not to squeeze you really tight. Promise promise promise. I. Akashi sighed his cheekbones turning slightly pink. After, okay. Bakuto broke into a wide smile. Yes. Bounding onto the court, he ran towards the rest of the team. Guys. Guys. You will never believe it. Akashi kissed my forehead, literally right here. Wanna see the spot? It just happened. Like right here. And, and, and then he said he'd hug me. Can you believe it? I can do anything. I can spike so hard. Spinning around, he pointed his finger straight at the setter. I'm going to make you so, so proud, Akashi. Just you wait. You're going to want to hug me for the rest of your life. The tips of Akashi's lips turned upwards. Let's just focus on practice right now, Bakuto-san. Okay, Akashi. Kanoha raised his eyebrows at the setter as he joined them by the net. Akashi simply shrugged. Rest of your life. It was an effective strategy. MHM. Okay. Whatever you say. Akashi. Look over here. I'm about to serve the best serve ever. Are you watching? 
It's going to blow your mind. Akashi smiled slightly at the ace. Yes, but Kuto-san. I'm watching you. Daisuga. Daichi closed the door to the gym with a loud exhale, slipping his key out of the lock and tucking it into his pocket. He turned to Sugar with a tired smile on his face. Well that was a long one. Sugar chuckled. Tell me about it. Why exactly did Tanaka bring handcuffs again? I don't even know. Something about enforcing law and order, maybe? Trying to do a citizen's arrest on Tsukishima though. Daichi shook his head. Sugar giggled. I knew it was going to be bad as soon as he showed up in that spandex bodysuit. Oh god, the bodysuit. Inoshita looked like he was about to fall off a cliff. The poor guy. Sugar laughed, smiling at Daichi. You're doing a good job though. I'm proud of you, Daichi. Daichi sighed and looked away. I don't know. I'm trying, but sometimes. He sighed again. I don't know. I just don't want to let them all down. Hey. Look at me. Sugar reached out his hands to cut Daichi's face and turn him towards him. You're doing amazing. But Sugar. He stopped protesting, however, when Sugar went on his tiptoes to lightly kiss his forehead. I mean it. Sugar pulled back to look him straight in the eyes. Daichi smiled softly at him. Yeah? Yeah. Laughing, Sugar started to let go of his face, but Daichi quickly reached up to interlace their fingers. Hey. Sugar. Thank you. Sugar smiled at him cheekily. What else are vice captains for, eh? Daichi chuckled and they started home together, their hands interlocked as the sun began to set behind them. Sugar looked over at him for a moment before leaning his head over and resting his cheek atop his shoulder. Hey, Daichi. Yes, Sugar? This is nice. Daichi paused. Sugar could feel him start to smile against his hair. Yeah. It is. And at that, Sugar closed his eyes contentedly, an easy grin slowly overtaking his face as they walked back home together. Kajehina. Hinata stopped in the hallway, a smile spreading across his face as he took in the scene in front of him. Kajima was scowling, his knees on the ground and one arm arm almost completely submerged into the vending machine. Hinata giggled and skipped over. Whatcha doing, Kajima? Getting eaten by a vending machine? Kajima's head whipped around to glare at Hinata. Dumbass. I'm just the stupid things broken, okay? Broken and man-eating? It's not eating me, idiot. Hinata hummed. Yeah, you're probably right. You would taste like rotten fish flavored detergent. Hey. I wouldn't exactly call you tasty either, mister. Orange hairball. Hinata giggled at his glare. Do you need some help? No, absolutely not. I can get it out myself. Really? How long have you been here again? I that that's irrelevant, moron. So a long time. You're an idiot. Hinata leaned over, and Kajima shot a glare at him. No, stand back up, Dumbus. I told you that I don't need. But instead of reaching into the vending machine, Hinata just leaned down and lightly pecked his forehead. Kajima froze, his face going beet red. What how I? Hinata grinned as he stood back up and turned around. Who's the orange hairball now? Kajima flushed. Why you hey, you can't just do that and then leave. But Hinata only stuck his tongue out over his shoulder before sprinting down the hallway. Oh I. Dumbus. Hinata glanced back to see that Kajima was struggling to disentangle himself from the vending machine. Hinata grinned and ran faster. Hey. Get back here, you idiot. Catch me if you can. You I. I'm going to get you, Hinata. Hinata snickered as he rounded the corner. Good luck with the vending machine. Kuro Ken Kuro kicked open the door to Kenma's room with a wide smirk stretched across his face. Kenma. Kenma glanced up from his game to give him a little smile. Hi, 
Kuro. Flopping down beside Kenma on the bed, Kuro breathed out happily as he closed his eyes and leaned back onto the pillows. Kenma's gaze flitted back to his Nintendo. I am so dead right now. I had to take two tests and do a presentation worth like half of my history grade today. Oof. Yeah. He sighed. Maybe I'll take a nap. On my bed? Kuro cracked his eyes open to grin at him. Oh, come on. It's communal property by now and you know it. Kenma just shrugged, the Nintendo's buttons clicking as his thumbs deftly pressed its keys. Oh, and before I forget, I picked up some apple pie on the way over here, so there's some in your fridge for later. Cool. After a moment of silence, Kuro sighed loudly. Do I really not get a simple thank you? No that was kind of you. Or how about an Okuro? How can I ever repay your boundlessly selfless generosity? Kenma didn't even glance up from the game, his voice monotonous. Oh, Kuro, how can I ever repay your boundlessly selfless generosity? Kuro gasped. Whoa, Kenma, I am totally floored by your sincerity. MHM. Truly dumbfounded. Wow. Literally stunned. You're going to keep doing this, aren't you? Simply bewildered, to be honest. Exhaling loudly, Kenma paused his game and set the controller down beside him. Fine, Kuro. If you really want to thanks though, you have to close your eyes. I'm not doing it if you can see me. Kuro grinned. Do I make you that flustered, Kenma? Kuro. Kuro smirk widened as he shut his eyes. Fine. Fine, I'll play by your rules. Good. Careful to pull his hair back so that it wouldn't touch Kiru's face, Kenma leaned down over the boy and took a moment to just let his gaze roam over his features. He smiled. Pretty. After a long moment of quiet though, Kiru started fidgeting. I'm waiting, you know. Kenma rolled his eyes. Then, inhaling deeply, he quickly brought his lips down to graze against Kiru's forehead. Kuro immediately stilled beneath him. Thank you, Kuro. His voice was barely above a whisper, but Kuro's eyes shot open and he hastily sat up. You. Kenma had already picked up his Nintendo and was back to furiously pressing at its buttons. Kuro gaped at him. You just kissed my forehead. When? Literally five seconds ago. Really? Yes really. Um. What do you mean um? I don't remember that. How can you not remember that? It was less than a minute ago. You must be imagining things. But you. I felt it. No you didn't. Yes I did. Aren't you tired? What does that have to do with anything? Maybe you dreamt it. I wasn't asleep. Hallucination then. I didn't hallucinate anything, Kenma. You definitely kissed my forehead. I think I would remember that. You do. No I don't. Yes you do. Your voice is distracting me. Didn't you want to take a nap? Well yeah, but. Good night, Kuro. It's literally 3 in the afternoon. Kenma just shrugged, not looking up from his game. After a moment of staring at him with wide eyes, Kuro flopped back onto the bed. You're screwing with my brain, Kenma. Kenma looked over to see that Kiru had closed his eyes again, a slight smile tilting the edges of his lips up. Kenma turned his attention back to the game, his cheeks tinted pink. You're the one screwing with mine, Kiro. Ashiton Ashijima was sitting on the locker room bench. Sweat running down his neck as he quickly chugged down the contents of a water bottle. Tenda bit his lip and smiled. Wakatoshi-kun. Ashijima set down the water bottle beside him to watch Tenda skip towards the bench. Hello, Tenda. You played super well today. Thank you, Tenda. You as well. Tenda's grin grew, and he sidled up closer to Ashijima, who only tilted his head back so that his gaze never strayed from Tenda's eyes. Is there something on your mind? Tenda chuckled a little. No, no, nothing in particular. He decided to try and take another step forward, placing himself so that he was standing in between the ace's knees. Ashijima still didn't react. 
I wonder how close he'd let me go. Ashijima furrowed his eyebrows. Are you sure, Tenda? Yup. Everything's fine with me. That is good to hear. Looking down into Ashijima's sincere olive-colored eyes, Tendao's smile grew softer. You really are a miracle boy, ha, huh? Wakatoshi. Then, before he could think too hard about it, Tendao reached out to rest his hands on Ashijima's shoulders so that he could place a firm kiss on the ace's forehead. I'm so lucky to be able to block for you. He let himself stay there for a moment, his eyes closed and his lips inches away from Ashijima's skin. But then he exhaled. Can't take advantage of his neutrality too much, after all. Smiling sadly, he straightened his back up again and started to take a step back. Well I better. But then two strong arms reached out to wrap around his waist, pulling Tendao back into Ashijima's chest. Tendao's eyes widened. Wakatoshi-kun? Please do not leave yet. Ashijima's deep voice was muffled by Tendao's jersey, his face pressed into the middle blocker's stomach. I won't keep you for long, just. Don't go yet, please. Let me have a little longer. Tendao smiled. Okay, Wakatoshi-kun. Anything for you. Letting his hands delicately rest atop Ashijima's head, his fingers tentatively began to play with the soft brown strands. Thank you, Tendao. If he knew how I... Tendao laughed lightly. Trust me, Wakatoshi-kun. I should be the one thanking you. Should I make a part 2 for some underrated shits? Let me know in the comments.